Hello, welcome to Flix Water YouTube channel. Brackish water, ever wondered what that is? Well, it's a type of water that's pretty common on Earth's surface, but it's not something you'd want to sip without some treatment. Today, I'm going to walk you through what brackish water is and how we can make it safe for various uses. Access to clean drinking water is a pressing issue globally. Surprisingly, even though water covers about 71% of our planet, only 3% of it is freshwater, and a mere 1% is suitable for drinking. So, you might ask, what's the solution? Well, it could lie in treating slightly salty brackish water. It's easier to desalinate compared to freshwater, which could be a game changer for addressing the world's water crisis. So, what is brackish water, exactly? It's water that's saltier than fresh water, but not as salty as seawater. Salinity measures the concentration of dissolved salts in water. Brackish water typically has a salt concentration ranging from 1,000 to 10,000 parts per million ppm, while freshwater has less than 1,000 ppm, and seawater has around 30,000 to 40,000 ppm. In terms of total dissolved solids, TDS, which include various minerals, brackish water surpasses drinking water guidelines, usually falling between 3,000 and 10,000 ppm, you can find brackish water in estuaries, which are where rivers meet the ocean. The mixing of fresh river water with the salty sea creates this unique type of water. Estuaries are home to a range of specially adapted plants and animals, like mangroves and oysters, but brackish water isn't limited to estuaries, you can also find it in lakes, man-made pools, streams, and even underground in aquifers. Human activities, like shrimp farming and dike construction, can also create man-made sources of brackish water. And surprisingly, about 75% of groundwater in New Mexico is brackish. Even private well water can sometimes be brackish, which means it needs treatment before you can safely use it. Now, let's talk about treating brackish water. The process involves desalination, which removes those dissolved salts and turns it into fresh water. Two main technologies come into play here, reverse osmosis and distillation. Reverse osmosis, a leading global desalination method, works by pressurizing salt water and passing it through a membrane. This membrane allows water to pass through while blocking salts and other impurities. One of the world's largest reverse osmosis plants is in Israel producing about 165 million gallons of fresh water daily. Distillation, on the other hand, mimics the natural evaporation process. Brackish water is heated until it becomes steam, leaving behind salts and minerals. When the steam condenses back into a liquid, it's fresh water. There are two main distillation methods, multistage flash distillation, used in large-scale operations, and solar distillation, which is great for smaller setups and communities. Saudi Arabia, for example, has one of the largest multistage flash distillation systems, producing about 200 million gallons of fresh water every day. Now, you might wonder, what do we use brackish water for? Well, both in its natural state and after desalination, brackish water has various applications. Naturally, it's used as a coolant in industries like thermal power, oil and gas, and mining. On the other hand, after desalination, it becomes suitable for drinking and can even be given to livestock. This is especially crucial in arid regions with freshwater shortages. In conclusion, the existence of brackish water around the world presents a unique opportunity to combat water scarcity. But, like any natural resource, we must use it responsibly for it to be a long-term solution, and if you were wondering, no, you can't drink brackish water directly. It's too salty and consuming it can lead to dehydration. However, with the right treatment, it becomes perfectly safe to drink. So, that's the lowdown on brackish water, its significance, and how we can make it work for us. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to drop them in the comments. Stay curious, folks. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel for next topics or click to see the next videos on the right.